Let us look at another interesting feature in addition to the carrier aggregation that comes into the LTE radio access network side. The home E node B node which is responsible for communicating and trans transferring traffic from the mobile terminal to the core network that is evolved packet core. Overall the evolved packet system is so much dependent on home E node B or E node B that we need to understand it in a little more detail. We'll appreciate the radio access side of home E node B, the services which it may offer, its connectivity and coverage issues. As we know that the radio access to 3G and 4G networks is provided through these respective network elements that is home node B as in 3G which is implemented in UMTS ter terrestrial radio access networks the UTRAN and the evolved UTRAN for home in node B. Now since the home in node B aka kind of a base station sits at the customer premises so it could have different ownerships. It could be owned by home subscribers or it could be a business or a commercial enterprise. It means that the radio access now is going to determine what exactly is the user deployment and application scenario. The applications or services that Home in Node B can provide, it could be for a specific group known as the closed subscriber group. In that case, no additional roaming mobile user can be accommodated in case a handoff is required. Or the mobile subscribers other than the original closed subscriber group home users, any arbitrary mobile user that happens to be in the radio coverage of home in node B can be serviced. So it means the scope of the service could be either very private and closed or it could be open. As far as the connectivity of home in node B to the core network is concerned, home in node B is connected through any well-known broadband access technology. It could be DSL, any variant of DSL as in XDSL. It could be connected through the optical network. It could be cable access or it could even be wireless that is fixed wireless. The last one needs a little more attention that is a home in node B would have two wireless interfaces now one wireless interface it would have with the mobile station and the other wireless interface it would have with the core side. The overall size of the wireless network if you recall in um, WLANs we would call it a basic service set a BSS. Here in terms of coverage the smallest area that uh, home node B can cover is recommended to be around 10 meters. It's known as a femto cell. Femto being very small actually means that we can have larger transmit and receive power both from the mobile side and to the mobile so that high data rates can be achieved. Another advantage of femto cell is that it implements a vision we are going to talk about it it is a concept a vision known as the fixed mobile convergence that is converging the fixed technology broadband technology and the mobile broadband technology so femto cells actually allow the fixed mobile convergence concept to be realized without forcing the user equipment to have multiple interfaces. 
So femtocells actually have the flexibility like uh, we have earlier talked about LTE and LTEA networks. That is, a femtocell can be configured for uh, user equipment that is 3G enabled to be serving like home node B. And a femtocell can serve like uh, home E node B um, if the user is uh, LTEA enabled.